According to more than one major news network this week, the market had the worst day it had, the worst week it had, in the last three months. And various pundits have said different reasons for it. Uh, the collapsing world economy, the sell-off of major stocks of major corporations, a volatile market in general, and on and on. We made all these excuses that they've made. But I don't really need to tell you that the economy hasn't turned around. We don't really need a news report to let us know that things have not shaped up yet. We don't need to listen to the political pundits or read the headlines in the paper to know that our country is still struggling to rebound from the political issues that we're suffering. And each day as we consider the various folks who are supposed to make the predictions, make the judgments, we know that it, all it is are predictions. All they can do is guess, educated guess admittedly, but guess at what is to come, whether it's a a journalist, someone who's on Wall Street, a certified CPA, or even we, as we sit down to balance our checkbook, all we can do is guess at what expenses we have coming. Admittedly, like I said, educated guesses, but we don't know exactly what is coming. In fact, whether it's financially related or whether it's dealing with uh, the day-to-day -day lives that we have, we can't predict what tomorrow brings. I don't know about you, but I don't know what's coming two days from now, much less two hours from now. I don't know what's coming two months from now. I don't know what's coming two weeks from now. I don't know what's coming two years from now or two decades from now. And I would venture to say that no one here and no one listening is going to know the future either. With the exception of God himself, no one knows his omniscient. No one knows all things. No one knows what is to come. Only God knows what is to come. And at times, it's easy not knowing what is to come, to live in the moment. And isn't that the cry of the papers? Isn't that the cry of our society? Live in the now, they say. Have you heard this before? Live in the now. Live in the moment. And what does it mean to live in the moment? It means that you don't plan for the future. You don't prepare for the future. It means that each day, no consequences. You live it to the fullest. To Have you heard this before? I hope this is not news to you because I've seen it. But... Oftentimes, when we live in the now, when we live in the moment, when we don't prepare for the future, when we don't look forward to what God has planned, it can be fairly disastrous. And let's just for a moment go back to our gospel lesson for today from Luke chapter 21. If you have it in front of you, I'm going to, we're going to look at that quite a bit today. But Luke chapter 21, the disciples seem to be focused on the now. As soon as they're leaving the temple... Their first comment to Jesus is, wow, look at the beautiful stones. How ornate they are. How well they've been carved. The craftsmanship. Immediately before that, if we read the first four verses of Luke 21, we would discover that Jesus had al already been teaching them that their fo where their focus should be. The widow, the widow's offering, most of us are familiar with that, had put into the plate her last two, well, pennies is our modern equivalent, but her la the, la the last of her money. And she wasn't preparing for the future, but she was trusting in God. Mm, more on that in a moment. Well, the disciples, though, they didn't seem to get that, though. They didn't seem to see, see that Jesus was pointing them beyond themselves. Instead, they're looking at those giant stones. None of us have ever done that. The beautiful stained glass, the fine metalwork or woodwork in our church. There's, and maybe for us it wouldn't be as such a surprise to hear the words that your church is going to be destroyed. For the disciples, on the other hand, though, to hear that the temple was going to be destroyed would have been quite a shock. You'd have to realize that the stones they were talking about, the stones they were looking at, these were two-ton sto two stones. So to imagine that not one stone would be left on top of another one, it would be hard to believe. I can just see Peter now, as impetuous as he is. Whoa, wait a minute, Jesus. No way. This is not going to happen. How, is, how are they going to knock down two and three ton stones? In fact, we know that this does come. You notice, though, that when Jesus says this, it kind of stops all conversation. It stops all of the questions and debate. In fact, there's only one question that the disciples want to know. They want to know when. When is this going to take place? When are all these things going to happen? What are the signs going to be? 
They want to know when. And isn't that our own desire? To know when. To know when God is going to come again. To know when He is going to go ahead and He's going to take us back. Take us home to Him in heaven. Isn't that our desire? To know that exact moment. But Jesus doesn't answer them directly. Notice, if you have your, the text in front of you, He doesn't say, well, you know, December 12, 2012, He's going to come back and we're going to be all set. He doesn't say to them, as soon as this catastrophic event happens, I'm coming back. No, he doesn't even say that after this season of this month, this year, I'm going to come back. He, in fact, you notice he doesn't give them a really direct time. And I think we, like the disciples at time, probably struggle with that, not knowing exactly when it's going to happen, when Christ is going to come again. In fact, you notice how he answers them. He describes the events that are going to happen that don't sound too unfamiliar from our events today. He talks about wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes. The whole earth is going to be turned upside down. There's going to be great upheaval in the earth. And when you look around, well, isn't that exactly what's happening today? These are not verses you want to read before you go to bed at night. When you read through these, you see that that last day is not going to be an enjoyable day. That last time is not going to be an enjoyable time. In fact, when you start to consider all that has happened it just in the past year in our world, it seems like the time is right, doesn't it? Natural disasters have not only rocked our country, but they've rocked our whole world. Various states have had disaster areas declared. There are many different countries fighting against other countries. Even if they don't make CNN or Fox News or whatever news channel you watch, there are small skirmishes constantly going on. Wars and rumors of wars. And it seems, with the fall of the economy, that all these things are starting to line up. However, when we start to focus on these events, when we start to focus on these things, or the things that are happening in our personal lives, we lose focus on what is most important. In fact, if you have it in front of you, the most important thing is that last verse we had from today. 21-28, Luke 21-28 is, when these things begin to take place, stand up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Your redemption is drawing near. What a beautiful statement of gospel. Amongst all these things that are going to happen, we know we have a firm promise that our redemption is near. That the, even as these things are happening in our lives, in our world, all around us, to the people we love and care about, that God, that God is planning, that His plan is greater for us. That His plan is to bring us home. That His plan is to redeem us. And we know that redemption is coming. Not because of something we've done. Because Christ has already fulfilled the promise. Over 2,000 years ago, Christ fulfilled the promise on the cross. Christ giving His precious blood. Christ dying there made sure we did not have to worry about that last day. That no matter what happens in our lives, we needn't be afraid because we have the promise. We have the promise that we are one day going to be with Him. Now even knowing that, many Christians, and even non-Christians, they, they struggle. They struggle. 